Hey, good evening everyone. Really good to see you on this sunny, bright Monday afternoon. Well, afternoon for us in the UK. I'm sure some of you around the world might be just waking up or about to go to bed. We actually have had some sun today. We had a lot of rain yesterday and we had some good weather on Saturday. So it's looking, you know, bright and promising. But I do hope you had a good Monday. I haven't streamed till since Saturday and that's been two days. And uh, it, it feels like uh, quite a long time. So it's going to take me a couple of minutes to uh, get back into it. But uh, good to see you all there, and I uh, hope uh, you managed to get some open source coding, coding done over the weekend. I should be checking out your uh, your GitHub accounts. I'm more than happy to do that. Do do share your uh, account or your username, and I can uh, have a look. And I can give you a bit of polite peer pressure. And also, uh, if you want me to look at your open source projects, do uh, also share the uh, username and uh, the repo. I can go have a look and put in some comments. And uh, you never know, you might get a PR from me as well while waiting for my CI build uh, to, to run. Do you notice anything different about my setup today? So I've made some changes over the weekend and I've got a new uh, profile kind of character. Uh, I think they call it a chibi. I really don't know what that means, but it looked cool, kind of cartoon version of me wearing a dashboard hub hoodie, which I am actually wearing now. If you can see, I've kind of lifted myself up a bit. And uh, I've got a new overlay, um, so hopefully that looks uh, looks good. Give me your feedback and uh, do let me know what, uh, what you think. I'll be interested. I'm always making improvements. I also had a good suggestion from somebody uh, over the weekend about the light just being on one side and too close. So I've moved the light back um, and I've put a second one, although I do notice quite a big shadow on my face because of this mic. So maybe we're kind of like, I don't know, move it out of the way. I'll do that maybe another time. Uh, less of a shadow. Didn't think that through. But hopefully it's all clear. And uh, what are we going to do today? So if, you, if some of you were here on Saturday, you might remember I was working on Dashboard Hub, which is the code I've got in front, exactly how we left it together as a team on Saturday. And uh, I got quite down because I realized that I couldn't do something with no SQL. Well, I could, but it's going to be a lot more effort where with a SQL solution, it would have been actually easier to do that. So I really, yeah, I wasn't sure about it. And I, I guess I was a bit down more because I was, the, the cogs in my head were turning. And I was having a bit of a, a bit of a think. That's my phone. Excuse me while I decline that. Um, so uh, yes, nothing important. Uh, yeah, I was kind of torn. I was thinking, right, I do eventually want to move back to, I do want to move to serverless, uh, Aurora, Aurora serverless. And, uh, but is now the right time with a big conference event coming up in eight weeks. I really want to add some features that I can demo to people and show to people. And I guess it's this whole balance that um, we all have, I think, as, as techies and ent entrepreneurs or startups, however you want to label it or call it. Do we do some, you know, architecture stuff? Do we do some more improvements that you can't see? Or do we do the shiny new stuff that we can see, um, but maybe underneath it's not as nice? It's, uh, it's finding that balance. And uh, yeah, it's quite, it's quite hard. There's always something you want to, kind of want to show. And I don't have the answer. I can talk about my experience and, and also how the next eight week goes and what I decide. Uh, I am in Thailand uh, from this weekend, so I, I will have more time to work on Dashboard Hub. And it's open source, by, by all means do have a go have a look at it. And I'm thinking um, I might try and spike one, do a spike for one day and see how hard it would be to move from DynamoDB, to, which is a uh, NoSQL solution, to um, to uh, like MySQL on uh, Ser Aurora Serverless. So I might do a spike on that, but I didn't want to get distracted. So when I got stuck, oh, I say stuck, when I got kind of torn on Saturday, I was, I'll was i show you what we were doing. Um, so here in the IDE, we were doing, uh, creating a project and a project will have environment added to it. And we were writing the automated tests in Cucumber to test the API. So we hadn't got onto the UI yet. But the penny dropped for me and I realized that I couldn't easily return all the environments in the project because they're in two different tables on the NoSQL and you can't do joins. So I was, I was torn 
Um, and I didn't want to write some code that I would throw away because, you know, refactoring one thing, but throwing away code is, I think, is, is not very nice. But I've made my piece with it. I'm going to do the API um, with, uh, with not joining the data. So I could join it in the code. So you'll only get the environment ID back with the project. And in the UI, you will have to go and make four, five, six more calls to get it. Um, I think that'll be the easiest thing to rework when I move to it. But now I'm talking through it with you again. I'm kind of doubting it because when you talk through it and you explain it to someone, I mean, in the tech world, we call it um, rubber ducking, where you kind of, you know, you have a rubber duck that you explain something to. And as you explain it, it kind of makes you think. I mean, that's why pairing is, is so great. And code review, when people ask you, you're not explaining it beginning to end, but when people ask you, it's um, it makes you makes you think about it challenges you and it might either solidify what you were thinking or might make you change your mind. I'm just gonna kind of maybe turn off the big screen above. You can't see it. I will flick it on for you if you want. And um, the reason why I think of turning the screen uh, off above is because it's quite distracting. If you have a look, I've got this. <laughs> This image has gone gone onto the screensaver, and this uh, this image is kind of uh, moving. I can see it on top of my eye, just kind of below my cap. It's kind of like a bit distracting. Um, I should maybe change it to the screensaver. You can see I had Twitch on there earlier. Um, so the screensaver shouldn't come on uh, too soon, maybe. But uh, anyway, enough about my setup. If you do have any questions about what I was saying, or about my thinking, or about Dashboard Hub, or technologies. All my my setup there are details uh, but down below in um, about my whole setup of my rig and I'm actually going to do a, a walkthrough video um, talking in more detail about it and do don't forget to join our discord where we chat between streams of, with other techies and bounce ideas off, off each other so let is let's get back to um, let me switch cameras where's my uh, Where's my button? Here we go. So let's get back to, to the coding. So let's just finish this off and I want to worry about it later on um, because there's just nothing I can do about it now. Right, okay. So we have, um, how is the uh, the text size, everyone, by the way? Is the text size uh, readable? Is it uh, is it too small? It should be the, the same as it used to be, um, but I thought I would just double check because I've kind of rejig things slightly. Rather than sharing my screen, I'm actually just sharing the, the windows, which is why I might be a bit slow flicking between them. Um, but do uh, do let me know. And uh, if we have any, uh, do say hi in the chat. Uh, let me know what you're working on and how your day's been. And uh, if you need a nudge in the open source coding side, uh, uh, I guess we're calling ourselves uh, Twitch coders, and I know uh, quite a few of them have been busy over the weekend working on their open source projects. I saw in a Discord, writing Discord bots to forums and, and so forth. So playing with new technologies, and it's always good to have that bit of a kind of you know chat and challenge and um, uh, I guess enthusiasm, and that's what what kind of gets me going and gets wants me to do this more is because you know the all the great work you're doing and uh, um, it just encourages me to do more work I think it's a, a healthy kind of cycle uh, this modern day working on the bot like new setup so yeah I like your bot by the way your github bot that's pretty cool that's really awesome if you want to um, shift it into uh, twitch coders organization on github let me know when we can move it over and give you admin access uh, to, to that. That's uh, that's fine. Um, and we can group all those projects together. And uh, you like the new setup? Awesome. Well, hopefully, like I said, the lighting's okay, but I can see the shadow because of the damn big microphone. I'll have to have a think about that. But yeah, I hope you like the uh, the, the overlay and, and stuff. So still need a bit of tweaking maybe over time, but um, big improvement on, on what I had before. Uh, okay, so... Um, Let's get back to these tests. Let's try and finish the API crud part off. And so maybe tomorrow we can, or Wednesday, we can really get onto the UI stuff, do some more Angular. I know people have been watching Venzra and do the Angular side, so um, it'll be good uh, good to see that. Um, let's remind ourselves where we got to on, uh, on Saturday. Let's have a look. Okay, so we've got get private. So let's get a private uh, project. And then this is going to be get a, a public project. And if you do have anyone has any technical questions, do do jump in and ask. Don't be shy. Uh, we're all friend, we're all friends here, and you'll see me making lots of mistakes. And do do correct me. I'm only human. 
Okay, uh, let's have a look. So the just to kind of show you the um, the endpoints we added on, we added uh, these four on I think Friday and Saturday it was. We added a project list, a public project list, and we added a private project list, so kind of my projects, and we add uh, added a, a get a public project and get a private project. And the tests we had, um, let me move this over. Okay, um, and uh, so uh, let's have a look. I think that that was pretty much done. Cannot retrieve a, a private project if not logged in. There's no given I'm logged in. I cannot retrieve a, a private project if not the owner. So I am logged in this time, but uh, it's, um, yeah, I should still get a 404. I'm just realizing half my IDE is hanging off the screen. I think it's because I used to run it in a kind of a 2K mode and now I'm running it in 5K. Uh, but hopefully, um, hopefully the uh, the code is readable. If not, I can try and rejig it. Yes, so I'm using Cucumber.js and it's uh, it's really awesome. I, I just love it when I'm writing tests. I can just um, kind of do and and just start typing and it kind of comes up with the uh, uh, the autocomplete. Oh, you don't see the autocomplete because I'm not showing my whole window. But you do you get, you know, when you're coding, you get the IntelliSense. It's, it's like it's just like that as well. But I just noticed you don't um, get that when I share the window. Mm, something to uh, to bear in mind. I want to try and maybe make this window a bit smaller. It's yeah, a bit smaller, I think. Um, mm. How how is the text, everyone? By the way, do uh, do let me know. I think it looks a bit. Uh, a bit um, small. Uh, I'll maybe I'll play with it later, and we'll see how we get on. If I give this a shuffle, yeah, I can make can make it. Mm, I don't know if that's making it better or worse. Let me see. We're gonna have a bit of technical issues, right? We're used to this, like deploying to prod. No, I'm joking. It's never that bad. Maybe I thought I sorted this before, but maybe I didn't. So let's have a look how this is. Um, so now, I think the code is actually smaller. How, how is that for everybody? Quinton, Jeremy Quinton, thanks for joining from South Africa. Really good to have you here. Um, do uh, let me know your thoughts. So uh, I was actually meant to do uh, a pairing session and stream it on Saturday with Jeremy, but it didn't quite work out. We will uh, do one when I get back from Thailand in about three, four weeks. It will be, uh, the idea is Jeremy um, has started his own business as well, and it'd be really good to, to hear about his challenges and uh, the technologies he, he used. So he did, um, Jeremy, correct me if I'm wrong, but if I remember correctly from our last chat a few months ago, you were doing uh, most of the web app in PHP, but you had your um, your agents, if that's the right word, collecting the data uh, written in Golang. So uh, you wanted to use the concurrency of Go. So that'd be quite interesting to see how you transitioned, I guess, not the whole project, but you know, from PHP to Go, and how you found that technically, and uh, yeah, and how you got got on on the startup side as well. I look forward to feeding back how my events go with Dashboard Hub and, and all that stuff. Isn't WebStorm better for JS? So WebStorm, uh, so Dual, thanks, uh, thanks for joining and thanks for the uh, the question. Uh, WebStorm is a cut down version of IntelliJ, uh, and so I'm using IntelliJ because I don't know if all my clients if I'm doing Java or PHP. So I buy the the whole package, and I effectively have WebStorm, PHP Storm, um, all, all the all the pieces all together in my in my IDE. So I do have the whole package. So it is kind of web storm, but on steroids. So I get stuff like database section. Um, what else do I have? So I can pop out the database. Um, I think I think web storm has terminal, but I get a few other bits and pieces. I get Maven, uh, I think version control, to-dos. I think to-do you might get in web storm. Uh, so yeah, um, but it's pretty much, pretty much the same. Pretty much the same. Uh, so I do like, uh, I do like the um, JetBrains packages. Uh, well, yeah, uh, IDEs, they are very, very good. So what we were writing was uh, some tests and I was just talking about, um, yeah, getting the private and then it can retrieve my project. So I should get my project and I do, but also um, we didn't talk about, uh, I pulled it out on Saturday about the, uh, 
not this one, this is an environment. So if I bring up the project data, um, the IDs, I wasn't testing for those because I was thinking of reworking that, but actually we'll, we'll test for that as the rework. I'm not going to change it now. Um, so let's have a look. I have to remind myself how to do this now. So it is going to be, uh, the data will come back, although here it's escaped and, and quoted, it won't be when it is returned. So it will be, although in the feature file, we will have to do something very similar. So we're going to say in the environments field, we do expect an array. I think we've got a similar test um, over here. Uh, what experience do you have in uh, dual? What's the end of that sentence? What do you have experience? Oh, what do I have experience in? Sorry, my mistake. I read it, I read it wrong in a, in a hurry. It's a problem with having too many screens and I can, uh, Anyone who's just joined, I can show off my uh, my screens again. Uh, so if we go here, you can see my kind of got the uh, Apple 5K on the right, uh, Apple LG 5K again on the left, and the iMac Pro in the middle 5K, and then a nice 49 four inch, 49 49 inch uh, screen above. Um, so uh, yeah, I have uh, last two years I've been really doing the. Uh, let me put my my face back on, so I'm not talking to the kind of sitting back in my head while I talk. Uh, the, the last two years I've been doing, uh, two, three years, doing full stack JavaScript. So Node uh, in the back end and Angular in the front end. And in the last yeah, six months, I moved to serverless uh, Node um, for, for Dashboard Hub, which has been really awesome, and DynamoDB. And uh, but before that, I was doing Java for a couple of years. And then for 10 or so years before that, I've been doing PHP. So I have, a, I have a kind of a broad range of skills. Uh, I never used to like JavaScript. I did JavaScript for, I don't know, since the beginning, but never really liked it. But in the last couple of years, as I've really got, gotten into it, understood it a bit more. I mean, Node's really good. Angular, ver anything above version two, so I'm saying version five, but anything above version two with the TypeScript is really awesome. I'm really enjoying, enjoying working with the Angular um, and the TypeScript side. TypeScript kind of, uh, yeah, it just the IDE really works with you, and so that's uh, that's really really awesome. It isn't Java, but you haven't got the um, uh, the I guess the complication of Java, so it's kind of like maybe the best of both worlds. Uh, what uh, what what tech do you use, Jewel? What's uh, what's your background and experience? Hopefully, I'm pronouncing your name right, Jewel. I hope that's correct. I'm gonna try and write some tests while while we're talking as well. Otherwise, I won't get any work done. Um, but it's uh, it's good chatting to you all, and don't forget join the Discord. Uh, should be a link below if uh, if you want to chat between streams, and if you want to kind of you know make some suggestions on what we can cover, um, and uh, and if you want to stream and you want us to uh, raid you afterwards and, and all the rest, I'm still learning about the terminology of raiding and hosting, but I'm quite keen to um, build a community of Twitch coders. So I actually got some stickers uh, stickers coming. Do you would like some stickers? I've got coming. It should be arriving tomorrow. I think they said Wednesday, but I'm sure I got an email today saying it was going to um, arrive tomorrow. So, uh, Jeremy, when are you when are you uh, coming back to the UK, or do I need to post it all the way to South Africa? Let me uh, let me bring up my ID. So hopefully, uh, I almost hit stop record, stop streaming. Then I meant to uh, bring this up. So if you see this, and um, if we go stick a mule. And if I just uh, show you my orders, I think it was uh, this one. So hopefully you all can see that. But I do have, uh, for our Discord, I do have some stickers coming for uh, Twitch coders. So I'm quite uh, quite chuffed with that. Gonna stick that on my laptop. I've got my laptop right here. Okay, it's an old, it's an old, it's like three years old, this uh, laptop. Cause I busted my uh, uh, MacBook Pro touch bar one, but, uh, yeah, so you can see Dashboard Hub sticker at the top. Andrew, if you're watching, got the Venza one on there. Um, and then obviously the GitHub Zelda 8-bit uh, thing. So it'll be a, some nice space for uh, uh, Discord. And actually, um, I've got a couple of other ones. I've taken a, done a Twitch one as well. Let me zoom this in. Again, I'm, I'm kind of sidetracking from uh, coding, so I'll put that one probably over this side. Uh, and I've actually done one more actually today, which is really bad. Don't tell my wife. Should like, tell me off spending money on stickers? Um, but I did this, I got my uh, little character guy. Um, so he's gonna probably, I'll probably put him right over the Apple logo. Uh, no, I'm joking, I won't put it over the Apple logo. But um, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the plan, I do like my stickers. 
Okay, Safari off, and back to coding. Um, Mauritius, uh, those stickers with the cool paper-like effect. Um, which one with the paper-like effect? Which one are you referring to? You're referring to the one in the Discord that um, the modern day, uh, this modern day was uh, um, had designed. Uh, Jeremy, how do you recommend getting a job in a, in a different language or doing the crossover? Uh, that's a very good question, actually. I, my thinking was quite old, up until recently was quite old-fashioned. So I always when I <coughs> when I interviewed people, I always wanted to know, I guess, the the technical uh, specifics. Do they know the technical uh, specifics of certain languages? And uh, more recently, when I got this contract that I'm working fully remotely for for the last I don't know year two years. Um, and it was a full stack JavaScript and I had never done full stack JavaScript, made me realize that they wanted, they didn't ask me any JavaScript questions. They wanted to know how I would approach, um, uh, how I would approach a solution um, to a technical challenge. And they and it, the language itself wasn't important. I think more and more companies are becoming that way and actually opened my eyes to think, you know what? It doesn't matter what the technology is. A lot of the technologies um, overlap. Um, like for example, PHP or Ruby, there's probably so much overlap in, in the problem it's trying to solve. So if someone, one person, if somebody knows that la one language, but you actually want them to write it in a different language for whatever region, if it's historic or you prefer that language and so on, as long as they've got the right attitude, they understand design patterns and um, you know architecture and those sorts of things, then I, don't, I think the language is less and less important. Obviously some languages are massively different and then it's, it's a bit different, but most languages, I think, especially the modern languages, um, are, are so similar that it's easy to pick it up. So, yeah, I picked up JavaScript pretty quickly. Uh, I'm still learning it now, even years later, there's always new features coming out and there's always things that I, I haven't used. Um, but, uh, I mean, TypeScript I picked up maybe six months ago. And that was quite easy. I mean, it's very much like Java with uh, with types and generics and, and all those sorts of things. So that's quite good. Although in Angular, they do kind of you don't have to put the types and you can use any. So uh, when I'm uh, next week, when I'm working back on Dashboard Hub in the UI side, I do actually want to turn all the, or I'll put everything on, all the strictness of the uh, uh, of the linter. And uh, so therefore you have to be really strict about the types and, and all the rest. So that was a scan with the foil on it. Oh, is that what it was? It was a scan with the foil on it. It, it was very cool, oh, very creative, um, definitely. It was good. If you don't know what we're talking about, go have a look at the Discord and you'll, you'll see the, the, the pictures. Um, and then we did actually a GitHub URL to the, to the asset. You can see our community is, is quite active and um, always uh, always working on some open source stuff. So Jeremy, when are you gonna open source? Well, hopefully my, my um, I answered your question. Um, and also the remote side of things, I think companies are, are becoming more and more uh, open and understand the benefits of working remote. The, the, I guess the only downside is, uh, that when people do get a remote, when contractors or permanent people do get a remote contract, oh, sorry, a remote role, regardless if it's permanent or contract, they usually hang on to it, even if it's not, you know, the perfect role, because they've got that remote and flexibility aspect, they usually hang on to it. So when uh, these roles do become available, people usually kind of cling on to them as long as possible, so that. Um, that's why I don't think there's so many out there on the, on the job boards and on the market because they don't, they don't, I, don't think, I don't think they have the turnover as much. People are um, a bit more uh, accommodating, let's say. So and I think it's important. I hired two interns. So Jeremy, I meant to uh, um, fill you in on the weekend, but yeah, I had two paid interns for the summer and they're completely remote, one tech and one non-tech. I don't see the point in them coming into the office. For me, it's about can you um, get some work done? Uh, we plan the week, we plan the day, however, however work, what works best for them. And uh, you know, they can start at 10, 11 o'clock and you know, one day you might do a bit less, one day you might do a bit more. It just swings around about really. I think overall it will average out. I think it's important, you know, say if you're, um, you suddenly wake up early and you, know, you wanna start some work so you can finish early, then I think that's also important because uh, you don't want work to be a, uh, you want it to be as enjoyable as possible. I love what I do, and I think a lot of you love what you do as well. So that also helps. But when it becomes a chore, I think the quality drops a lot. 
to that. So what I'm trying to promote for Dashboard Hub and its employees is that um, if it's like, say, I don't know, three in the afternoon, the sun is shining, you know, you're not in the mood for doing any work, call it a day, it's fine. You know what, tomorrow, if you have that break and you get that rest and you kind of burn that energy and get that fresh air or whatever you, whatever kind of floats your boat, whatever you do, then the next day, you might do a couple more hours, you might not. But the point is the next day, the quality of the work will be better. So I think it's important. I think most people are professional enough to uh, to do uh, the right thing and not take advantage. And if you take advantage, then you know you get rid of them. I think that will become apparent, especially with us using GitHub and all these things. You can kind of see if someone's uh, taking the piss really. Oh, I shouldn't, can't swear, taking the mic. Um, I think most of us don't. We'll be happy to just you know work our own, our own pace. Right, hopefully that answers your question. I'm gonna get back to uh, to coding. Right, how long will we be going for? Uh, 30 minutes, and I haven't written one line of code, or one test. Okay, so TD, we're doing this TDD, so I have, um, I'll come back and fill in the gaps on these ones. Let's get the, uh, let's get the next endpoint done. So we have um, a list endpoint, which is a get, and we also have a get endpoint, which, uh, with a resource ID. So they both get, but one's with their resource ID and one's without. So the one without will get the list and the one with will just get one. The next thing we want to do is create. Let's just do the create next. Um, zoom in, can't see the code. I was afraid you were going to say that. I didn't change my resolution. Right, okay, let me change my res. Hopefully this doesn't like kind of break everything. I have done it before and it's been okay. So let's have a, let's have a look. Um, bear with me while I change my resolution. Let's hope this doesn't break. Ready? Three. Two, one, don't break. He's still there. Be gone. Did that work? I don't know. It's massive on my screen now. Let me see. It looks to kind of the same, uh, the same size uh, on this side. I don't think that worked really, did it? Um... Oh no, maybe it has. Actually, wait a second. Give me a second. Aha! No, it has. Let me just move this around and resize the windows because it's going across like two or three screens now. Let me do this. Um, okay, so if I do that and then we grab this. Okay, I have a big light in my eye. It's really hard to see this screen on the left. Let's see, we'll make it work. It's okay, team effort. Right, okay, um, it's gonna get better, trust me. You can't see me resizing it, but I will hit the kind of the, the okay button in a second and you will see me re you'll see it resize. So hopefully that now looks bigger and better. Now you can see more of the mistakes that I make. How does that look? Give me a kind of thumbs up or a thumbs down or a thumbs sideways as it didn't change. I probably, I wonder how, um, uh, so if I open now, if I open my terminal, you should be able to see it. Yeah, you can see the terminal. Okay, awesome. I will need to set my environment variable, I think. You can see that. That's great. Awesome. Um, Jewel, thanks for pointing that out. I, I, for some reason, I thought it would, like, uh, OBS would also scale it, but I was clearly wrong. So I still need to uh, resize. Um, there might be another way I can do it. So next time I actually try something, I think OBS has a setting where you can say, I'm trying to, I think I'm outputting at 4K, which is kind of a bit silly, I don't need to. So um, I will reduce it down to 2K, I think, so it will auto, auto scale it. I don't know why I kind of put it crazy. Um, I thought I was saving on bandwidth going from 5K to 4, but uh, still not enough. Right, let's run these tests and let's see how we're going. And actually one thing I do need to do is um, I think set the environment variables. Let me check. So let me see. Um, if we do make test, this might break because I'm gonna have the environment variables in. Let's have a look and see. Hey, Evie Brink, thanks for, thanks for joining us uh, again. How are you doing? How's your coding journey going? Um, it's really great. I think I still think it's really awesome that you're uh, you're sharing your coding journey. I think more people should do that. And you know, you'll see that even after um, all the years of coding, that I still struggle. And you can see in my terminal, it's uh, it's broken. So I do need to fix the environment variables. 
Um, for today, I'm back on uh, Dashboard Hub, uh, which is, if people haven't seen it actually, um, I think also uh, Jeremy, who I, who I know, um, I haven't spoken to him in a while, he hasn't seen it. Let me, um, let me bring Chrome up and I can give a quick uh, demo. So uh, I just noticed the kind of camera and the chat is uh, all over the screen. I probably need to, it looked right when I had it at 5K and now it's, I'm running I think at 2K. It's um, so the, the text is a bit bigger. Um, I can kind of, uh, yeah, I need to rejig a few things. We'll, we'll work on it, but any suggestions do let me know. I want to downscale the video to a lesser quality, but the only options I have are auto. Um, yeah, until I get partnered, you can't, uh, so I'm, I'm affiliated on Twitch, but until you're partnered, I can't change the options to have multiple options like on YouTube. And to get, I think there's four criteria to, to get partnered on Twitch. I've matched three of them. And the fourth one, I don't think I'm ever going to match. You're going to have like an average for 30 days of 75 concurrent viewers, which I kind of averaging about five. So I've got 70 more to go. Um, so that's normal that you can't, uh, uh, you can't adjust the video. So what I want to do is uh, I keep changing my screen to 2K, but it's also outputting at, at like you said, 16, whatever it was, uh, 1692. So what I'm going to do is uh, next time I will output at probably just 1080. I think that's uh, a lot better. So I will uh, I will rework that for next time. If you're watching it on a tablet, I think on a tablet it's quite small. Uh, but yeah, back to what we're working on. So um, we're working on Dashboard Hub, which uh, is written in Angular 5 front end and uh, a node and serverless back end. And so what I'm trying to do is I've got these environments. So when people do uh, deploy their projects, so you can see here we've got Dashboard Hub test. And um, when we deploy to the test environment, this is the version that's in that environment. And uh, this is how many releases we've done to that environment. And that was the last time we did a, did a release. And if I log in, I'm not logged in at the moment. While I'm logging in, uh, Evie Brink, so uh, what have you been uh, working on recently? How's, uh, how's your coding journey going? And when are you gonna be streaming next? I haven't seen you online for a, a couple of days. So now that I've logged in, I can click and get details. Um, is that an L or an I? It's an L. Uh, uh, Lend, uh, uh, Lend. Am I pronouncing that correctly? I really apologies. Uh, I can't even pronounce my own name, so um, you know, don't take it personally. But uh, I don't know Python. No, there's one language that I haven't actually really gotten into. Um, I haven't needed to. Um, had some te technical difficulties over the weekend. Windows update, but uh, might try and stream later tonight. Yeah, please do if you can. If you've sorted out um, uh, the Windows uh, update, then yeah, stream tonight. I'll try and you know, catch a bit of it. You always stream so late though, way past my bedtime. Um, I uh, yeah, always always quite late, but uh, I will definitely try and at least catch the first thirty minutes. Um, so yeah. Uh, Jeremy, gonna say bye for now. Watch the stream back later. Enjoy um, what I, I did, what I watched, and keep it up. Thanks, Jeremy. Really appreciate it. And we're gonna be doing a pairing session when I get back from Thailand in a few weeks. So uh, we want to see your project and how you, what you've been doing in PHP and Go and stuff. So don't forget, and have your pitch ready so we can uh, we can see it and uh, see the demo. Well, you can tell us about also the startup life and how. Uh, Obviously, you can't give away kind of you know, names and so on, but you can talk about the challenges you've had and what's worked and, and so on. It'd be awesome. Uh, <laughs> sorry, perks of being a uni student. Yeah, that's uh, that's true. Um, yeah, I have school tomorrow, and by school I mean work. But yes, uh, can't go to bed too late. And if I go to uh, releases, um, it will just show you uh, the historic releases and how. And this is how long they took. So they, they will vary slightly. Um, it's, there's so many variables, but the important thing is you don't have like a huge spike because then if you did have a huge spike, you think, well, what changed my build for it to suddenly take much longer? Um, so what we're doing, we're doing the API side. So let me go back to the environment. So these are the environments. So for my project, I have a test one and I have a production one. So I want to group these together. And uh, so what was uh, suggested by um, one of uh, the clients of Dashboard Hub was uh, to be able to create a project and put everything that you, all the environments that you want in a project. So on the API side, we are doing, creating the CRUD, so create, read, update, and delete um, of, of the project. 
and um, hopefully finish that tomorrow. And then Wednesday and Thursday, I really hope to do the UI part. So on the um, on the left, on the private section, I'll probably have my projects and add project. And you can add a project and select which environment you want to go in there. And then we can do some aggregations later on and, and so forth. So that's what we're kind of working at the moment. So if I, I need to get the Elgato to, to switch between windows and cameras and, and stuff a lot, lot easier. Otherwise I keep looking over to the left. So apologies for that. So if I turn off um, that and now you get back to the IDE. Um, so what we wanted to do, oh yeah, I was do what I was doing was um, the environment variables. So what I'm actually gonna do is switch back to Chrome on that note. Uh, so you don't see um, my environment variables because they're all my secret keys and so on. And uh, then what I'll do is I'll switch back to the IDE and we can run the test. And we'll see the test pass because I haven't written any new ones. We'll write some new ones that will fail and then we'll write the API endpoints to make those tests pass. Um, oh, I've got some more messages. Uh, dual, uh, the capital letters and numbers in the title in the cards are cut down the top uh, on the top in the demo. Uh, let me see, let me bring that back up. If I bring Chrome back up, uh, here we go. Um, the capital letters and numbers in, uh, let me see. What's cut off? I still don't get it. Capital letters and numbers. I so see the, uh, these parts, yep. Okay, got you. Um, I cut off on top of the, uh, in the demo. Did I scroll too high up maybe? Um, is that what you mean by it was cut off? Does it look okay like that? Um, How Brook Mini is here. <laughs> Thanks for joining, good to have you here. We're just, uh, I'm just gonna leave this screen up for a second and, and people can look at the graphs while I just put some environment variables into my uh, IDE where you can't see and then I'll, I'll, I'll kind of clear it off the screen because they are my private keys. I should have done that before the stream. I think it's the third or fourth time that I, I forget. So apologies for that. Um, let's uh, let's see. Okay, no one can see my terminal, right? Can they? Uh, I did the other day, put it on the screen and, and do it and someone pointed it out to me. I was a bit like, oh, that was a bit, uh, a bit silly. Right, I'll be literally one minute, even less. Someone time me. And don't tell me the pressure almost done I'm more than halfway now so it wasn't too bad um, right so if I clear that and let's have a look right let me just get rid of the browser and let me put you back to the terminal and you can see hopefully it works let's see so I've just run the make test and that's going to run all the tests um, and while that's running we can go and add some more to it so uh, it says it's running, it didn't have it. Um, it didn't have uh, the, um, the error, so it's good. It's clean quite slow today. Connection refused, interesting. Let's stop that and start it again. Let's have a look. That's a new one, I haven't seen that. These are all the technical issues you get, even after 15 years, as old as I am, you still get all the uh, all the technical issues and all the challenges, and you still make make mistakes. And it's really good for for people to to point them out. But I don't know why that's happening actually. Um, ah, I am on a VPN, which is really really stupid. I didn't disconnect. Right, this has gone from bad to worse. So I don't know why the connection is refused. It could be because of the VPN. Um, so. Uh, Jewel, uh, if you post a link, yeah, uh, if you're posting a GitHub link, just uh, post the end or just put a space before the dot because it actually looks for um, the name dot something. So just put a space before and when I kind of use it, I can copy and paste it and remove the space. And uh, or join the Discord below, which is what we use to, it's like a bit like Slack and we use it to chat between, uh, between streams, but you can post links in there and that, that's fine. Um, but yeah, okay, so this is quite embarrassing, and but I think it's good to, to show that you know, we're all human and uh, things are broken. Why is that broken? It should be connecting to the local host. So if I just have a look, I have no jobs running, and which is fine, which is correct. Why would it not run locally? 
I might have to, let me just kill uh, all Node and Java. We're not writing the project in Java, but no matching process is found. But uh, DynamoDB Simulator locally is written in Java. So to run the project locally, you do need, um, you don't need a database, but you do need Java and it runs an in-memory version of DynamoDB, which is no SQL solution. Although I do, as I mentioned before, want to switch to serverless, uh, Aurora serverless, where you, I would not need the Java dependency, but also I would um, need uh, a, a MySQL or Postgres um, database locally as well. Um, uh, okay, so uh, Jewel, what's that link? Am I, is that for, it doesn't look like a GitHub one. Oh. Oh, dot com. He actually wrote the word dot. Okay. Um, and what's the Y8KZE? I kind of looked like a bit dodge. I I'm joking. I don't mean that um, in a kind of a bad way. I'm just, just curious what the link's for before I kind of click it. Um, I've seen on, on YouTube some people getting caught out clicking on a link and it has like, a knocking sound and everyone's like turning around and, and looking at someone knocking at their door. So I don't want to kind of fall for that. Freak out. Knock my, knock my tripod behind me with my camera over. <laughs> That would be embarrassing. Um, okay, so this is quite also embarrassing is that I'm not, this is not running. So I have a backup plan. We can just contribute to an open source project uh, or um, because I don't want to spend ages debugging it because that will be boring for all of you. And running it again is probably not going to change it. But, you know, I thought I'd try. Um, hmm. I could close my IDE. Let me um, let me close my ID and see. This is kind of uh, it is embarrassing. I'm gonna try running in the terminal actually as well. Uh, let's see if I um, do. Bear with you one second. Let me think. Pipeline dashboard and dashboard hub directory. You can't see this, and, and that, that's fine. I'm kind of uh, purposely doing this because I'm gonna have my. Um, keys on the screen before I kind of set it all up and just see if that works. To see if the port's being blocked because maybe I've had it running too long. I haven't restarted my iMac in like I don't know, a week or two. But it does look like it's happening in the terminal as well. So it's not an IDE thing. It does look like it's a it's a setup thing. Hmm. Uh, that's a new error. I've been working on the project for quite a few months and it definitely is, is a new one. Suggestions welcome. But I suggest anyone want to, uh, it's uh, in, uh, uh, image of what I told you top cut off. Oh, I see. Joel, thank you. I appreciate that. Let me have a look. Um, I appreciate about the cut off. Okay, that's interesting. Let's have a look. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, yes, so let me share this so um, you all can see what Joel was talking about. So if I just trash the transition is over, ignore, ignore the adverts. Um, but yes, I have got a bug. I really appreciate your feedback. I have got a bug, and you're welcome to log it in the in the GitHub repo if you uh, if you want to, and that will give you um, uh, what do you call it uh, an open source contribution for for today as well. So if I um, grab the link and put it in uh, the um, chat, if you want to log an issue, that'd be awesome. Add that screenshot. But basically, um, what Jewel has rightfully pointed out is. When you, because I've got, um, what's the word? Uh, responsiveness. At a certain responsiveness, the line wraps and then it kind of cuts it off. So it's kind of a bit of a, yes, it's a, I've got it as a, in my mind as a bug. I don't think I've logged it as a bug, but um, it's a low priority at the moment. Um, I didn't think many people would see it, but uh, yeah, that's kind of like not good. Um, especially now that more people are, are seeing it. Um, if I, I don't know if I can resize the screen, uh, I can, here we go. So you can see, as you can see there on the alpha one, the second one along, it's kind of done that. As you get smaller again, it stops because then it goes to um, the two and it widens again. So I've got to, I've got to work on that. Um, I just uh, haven't done it. Um, if, someone if someone wants to um, send me a login issue, great. If someone wants to send me a pull request and fix it. <coughs> Vendra, um, or anyone else, then that would be uh, would be awesome. Uh, okay, so as I am failing miserably in writing some automated tests for my API, um, what we could do is we could write a bit of code, but we can't test it, and that would really kind of bug me. 
I know what the problem is. We didn't start the API. Okay, let me start the API and then this will be up and running in two seconds. What? Uh, this is embarrassing. I hope this is not recorded and all the rest. Okay, so let me start the API. It'll be running in five seconds. And let me switch back to my IDE and then we will start cooking on gas. Right, okay, API is up and running. Now if I do make test, this will run all the tests, so maybe I actually should, um, I've got this, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, environment variable to filter, to reduce the, the tests um, being filtered. I don't have to run the whole lot. The whole lot run on CI, so once I commit and push, that's fine. Uh, but um, I don't always want to um, run everything every time. I think it's about five minutes to run. So test tags is the environment variable, and we can just run um, if we just run projects, that will run all of the, the project tests. So you can see we have a tag up here. It's so anything with that, it will it will run it. So let's hit run. We shouldn't get um, a connection issue. No, we drop the first table, drop the second, drop the third, drop the fourth. Now data's going in and the test will run. Okay, cooking on gas now. Um, so we will get another endpoint done today, I really hope. With your help, we can. Right, okay, so that's running, that's all good. So the endpoint that I wanted to create, we wanted to do, uh, let's do a create, let's create some data. Let's do a, so we will say um, a create.feature file. Okay, so we'll add it to Git. Okay, and let me close some of these. Don't need all of these open. Everyone can see this, right? I, have, I haven't got the wrong window open, no, I think that's good. Okay. Right, this is the get public. Okay, close that. That's the data closed out. Let's close some of these tabs. Okay. Tests are running. Everything's good. There you go. Uh, hopefully you can see at the bottom. Hopefully it's not covered by the text. It is a bit. Um, but if I do this, you'll see that it says 13 scenarios ran and 13 passed. So actually 52 steps just for the projects uh, area. Okay. Let's, let's get something a bit more exciting now. Let's, let's get a failing test because there's no code to support that test and then we'll write the code to, to support it. I'm gonna cheat by copying and pasting this other create that I had. Um, kids don't do this at home because you're gonna see me make lots of mistakes by doing this. Um, but just for the try and save time. Uh, this is not environment, so we'll change this to projects. Can't spell projects, so that's not good. And this will be project create. Project still can't spell spell project. If anyone notices any mistakes, do do let me know. So we want to create a project. Uh, in order to create uh, a project, as a logged in user, I want to post project data. Okay. So I want to run in the seed data. Actually, this one doesn't need the seed data because it's going to create its own. But but we'll do that just to be consistent. We can always remove it later. So I cannot create a project. This is the test. Um, in the scenario title, it's it's just, uh, well, it's all English, but in the scenario title, it doesn't actually ha have any action behind it. It's, it's in the given, when, and then that actually have the uh, the actions. But any questions, do jump in. Also, in my humble opinion, graphs and background uh, being the same color is a bit strange to, to look at. Um, yeah, that's true, actually. It's a good point. I uh, I never thought of that. Now you mention it, it's really obvious. This is why user testing is so important. Jewel, you're awesome. I need, a, I need a thank you so much for your feedback. I need to send you some stickers, um, GitHub stickers, and we'll send you a, a Twitch coder stickers when they arrive tomorrow or Wednesday. Um, join the Discord and uh, DM me your, your address and I'll send you a pack of stickers. I really appreciate that. And can you log an issue on GitHub saying what you just said, which is, um, uh, hard to, to differentiate the, the, the graph um, with the background. You're right, the, the bars are blue and the graph background is blue. And I never really kind of you know, clicked. Um, so I was too busy looking, I guess, is the data correct and, and so on. So no, thank you for that, I really appreciate it. Uh, okay, so uh, when the data cannot create a project when not logged in, so we're gonna go to the projects endpoint, which doesn't exist yet. Um, for a post anyway, it exists for the get. 
um, but for the post. So we are expecting a 403. We will the first time run this get a 404, but we'll get the 404 passing or onto the next step, and then we'll go to a, a 403 afterwards. So we'll, we'll, we'll work through it. Create project successfully. So given I am logged in, so this time I am actually logging in, this will get a JWT, will actually make a login, so it will be correct. When I post to projects with, okay, so what data do we want to create? So let's look at the, um, uh, the, the data that we've already created and we can create something similar. So ID will be automatically generated, owner will be the logged in user. So we want title, I should be looking at the model rather than actual data. So we do want title, uh, description, and, and, and the environment and is private. So title, okay, so title, we will say uh, create project, just to be consistent, create project A, can't spell project again. Um, okay, and um, what else? We said description, didn't we? So we will say description, and description will be, I don't know, create, project a description and if you notice all the tables are kind of kind of all misaligned on uh, on on in IntelliJ you can uh, reformat the code it does this all for you yeah, on the Mac it is um, option command and L and you can see this kind of aligns all really well so that's good okay so we will create it but now we want to check that it's correct so underneath we can say so I make a post request I think that is the uh, only required one. The environment shouldn't be required because the default empty and is private with default as well. So but we, what we want to check is, do we get the right response code and is it created? So given I'm logged in, when I make a post to the project's endpoint with those fields, then should um, have a status, the status code should be, so here we go, we expected 200. There was a big debate, um, about uh, should it be 200 or 201 and uh, we've what's wrong with the uh, plugin okay 200 thank you uh, if you get something wrong so say if you put then I don't know a you can see that it kind of it kind of grays out um, it doesn't look correct and when you kind of get it right you can actually click on it and go to the step definition behind it it's called it's driving behind it uh, we did have a debate about was it 200, 201? Um, I don't think we came to a specific answer. It seems to be a bit grey. 201 was more if there was if it was created but no body returned, whereas 200 was if it just was still successful but there was body returned. I'm on the fence about it, so I'm just going to kind of stick it as a 200 for now, and, and we can come back to it. Uh, okay. So what else? Any questions? Do jump in. Any mistakes I make? Do jump in. I do appreciate it. You know, pairing of all of you is, is awesome. I get to learn from your experiences and as well as you, you know, learning from my mistakes, really. Um, but yeah, we've all got different experiences. Even if you've only had, even if you only just started coding, you will still have experiences. You will still spot things um, that uh, I won't. Uh, so that pairing is, is really, really important. Uh, don't forget, this will be it's all open source, so you can actually have a look at the code afterwards as well. And the status code should be 200 and I should have a field, so I should have a, an ID field, and we don't, we won't know what the value is because it's auto-generated. But we can check that um, that uh, it matches a regex. So the UUID in there just matches the right format. Hey L, thanks for XL. I, I can't remember. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. I'll just say L for ease. Thanks for coming back. Good to have you. Um, and hopefully you like the new layout of my uh, of my stream. I'm still still working on it, and hopefully the lighting's okay. This shadow is a bit kind of like bad. Um, but then the mic's behind me, which isn't very good either. Yeah, I've got more improvements to make still. Uh, how's your uh, how's your open source coding going? I see you've been doing a bit of bit of work. I think I saw in the activity. And uh, and I want to say should have a field. We expect a title, and we expect the title to be create project space a and then we should and we also want a description and we will actually have more thinking about it because um, there will be the other fields that uh, were created which are de defaulted um, description create project a description 
And actually, we probably want to check that if these aren't filled in, it isn't created. So it's probably another boundary test. It's the beauty of writing tests is you can cover boundary conditions without um, quite easily and without trying to man every time you make a change without manually kind of testing all the different scenarios. You kind of just runs really quickly and uh, gets that sorted. So um, going good uh, does what it's supposed to do so far. That's really good. If it does what it's supposed to do, that's really good. If it didn't, I'd be more worried. Worried. So no, that's good. Keep it up, and uh, yeah, definitely keep it up. A little every day goes a long way. Um, I haven't done much for the last two days, so I should take my own advice. But um, when I'm in Thailand the next couple of weeks, I will be doing a lot every day, or a little every day, if the wife lets me. Um, well, the wife will let me do a little. If she lets me do a lot, then that would be even better. But uh, I will try and stream from Thailand as well. So we'll see how the internet connection is. Right, okay. Um, I'm gonna run this. We'll come back to the default and I'm gonna put a scenario title in for the boundary condition, but we'll come back to it. So uh, I should probably say, cannot create project um, without, oh, not capitals, without required fields. Um, and so let's, I, I am gonna be logged in and let's make a post with no fields maybe. And, um, uh, or oh, we can actually make a post with just a description field. Let me copy that. And uh, if I remove the title, then that should fail. So if I also copy the status code, we'll be expecting a 400 because it should throw it back. So if I run this now, let's, let's, let's make it a bit more interesting, right? Let's just run it. And don't forget, we're going to get all three are going to fail because there's no code to um, at this endpoint. Well, there is, but not for a, a post. So it should all fail. There we go. There we go. Got a couple of 404s. It's looking good. We expect 404s. Uh, oh, I'm actually running all of the projects. Let me uh, let me stop that and let me just filter it a bit more. And filter it for project create. But we just want to run this one file. There's no need to to, to run the whole lot. Um, so let's have a look and see. So our cucumber tests are running. Um, you'll see it scroll up on the right hand side. Um, 404, perfect, 404, perfect. One passed, interestingly. Which is the one that passed? Oh, they're running in the seed data. That's fine. So four scenarios, this one would pass because that's expected. Although we don't actually need the C data in this one because we're creating the data. Okay, so they all got 404 because the endpoint doesn't exist. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the endpoint. Um, we can just create, copy the last one, to be honest. Uh, we just grab this one in the serverless config, duplicate it, and we will say uh, project create. And it's going to go to the file projects create. How have we done the other one? Let's be consistent. Where's the other create? Um, just to be consistent. Monitor create. Oh, it is create.create. .create. So the, fir the first, before the dot is the file name and after the dot is the function. So let's just be, um, be consistent. Ah, Jewel. Thank you for the link. Let's have a look. I got a 404 in that link. Is there anything else I need to change? Oh, there's a dot at the end as well. Okay, yeah, there's two dots. Oh, I still got a 404. Oh, there's a third dot. Okay, you're right. It's a bit painful. Um, have a look at the Discord channel. We haven't got any blocks on that. Uh, so the link you sent me, uh, Joel, uh, the line height 72 fucks it up. Oh, is that what it is? Okay, interesting. Good spot. 72, um, uh, the line height 72. Oh, I'm not sharing my screen. I am sharing my screen, but I'm sharing my ID. Let me go switch back to Chrome so everyone can see what I'm seeing. Um, so Jewel has just sent me this link and uh, line height, there we go, 72, there we go. Oh, is that what breaks it? Okay, interesting, I don't know why I put that on. I don't know why I put that on. We can uh, we can take it off and have a look. Um, if I am in here, I can just uh, open a new tab and I can just go make UI. Ah, you're not seeing that because again, I'm, I've got Chrome showing. So I've just opened a new tab in the terminal on the side and it's gonna run make UI. 
and uh, we can run the UI up and uh, we can we can have a look. So while that's running, let's go back to back to this real quick. And uh, so create create is what we're calling it. So create dot create, and it doesn't need an ID. It does need authentication. It won't be a get. It will be a post. And we're going to use Lambda rather than Lambda proxy, and that all looks all right. So we've got now uh, the project create uh, kind of uh, config. We need um, an actual file. So let's have a look. Has that finished building the UI yet? No, it's still building the UI. First time Angular builds locally, it takes um, quite a bit of time, even on my iMac Pro. But I'm quite interested to uh, yeah to fix that. That'd be awesome. Okay, it has built. So let me switch back to Chrome. Actually, no, tell a lie. Let me change that line. I open the file at least. Okay, so we go into web down here on the left, uh, and then um, source. Uh, envir uh, not there, environments, app, and uh, main, content, I think it's environment, uh, main content and environment, environment view, environment view, okay, and environment details, just scroll this over, and it was in the HTML. And the line was, well, the lot of line height 72 is everywhere. Uh, 26 probably. If I remove the terminal for a second so we don't get the wrapping. Let's have a look. Line height 72. Okay, it's in quite a few places. Uh, let's have a look which one it is. It's been a while since I looked at this. Okay. So we have is this the right one? Releases actually this isn't the right file. I'm being a donut. This it will be on the list view we were looking at. So on the list view, I think it calls in let's have a look. But I did probably have a line height on there as well, so that's why. Widget. Let's have a look. If anyone spots it, don't be shy. Do say, yeah, here we go. So if I search for that again, oh, here we go. Line height 72. So you think that breaks it? Okay. So I can pull that uh, that class out, and let's and we can see what happens. So let's go back to if I show everyone uh, Chrome. And if I go to, uh, if I refresh this now, this should now work. Okay, and then I haven't kind of got that sort of data in there with big enough, but let's have a look. Let's try and resize this and see if we can get the wrapping happening. No, it doesn't happen, it's not big enough. So what we can do is if I log in and uh, log in on my GitHub account, and we'll just create some data. Okay, so let me see. Do I own any of these? I don't any of these environments. So let's just add a new environment. It'll be build only. We'll just say uh, test or live streaming. This is just locally anyway. And uh, we'll just uh, create it. And then it will give me the curl command. So I just grab one of these and, I'll, and I can run it on the terminal. It's just a curl command. And I can run it and then. Um, I can make the uh, release name a lot, a lot bigger, and uh, then we can see um, we can see uh, kind of how long it is. So this is a long release. I should probably put dots in there rather than spaces. This is long release, big release. And let's see how. Oh, I had a hyphen, didn't I? As well, so let's put a hyphen in there too. So if I uh, send that data across, and now if I go back to, um, can't see the demo page locally. Are you see? Are you seeing this now? Um, v. This is a long release. 
hopefully you're seeing that. And as I um, make it smaller, there we go. So that's the issue we've got, is when it gets to a certain size, it wraps and kind of explodes up. And I think you're right about the line height. Now, if I go back to the code, and we remove this line height, and hit save. You'll see on the right hand side in the terminal, automatically uh, rebuild. Rebuild, it should reload the page. So if I bring up Chrome now, you'll see it reloading automatically. I didn't refresh that. And uh, it's, it's still wrapped, but it's, um, it's not exploding off the, the top, which I think is a lot better. Um, so it's still definitely a big improvement. So why did I put that line height in the first place? I have no idea because it still looks fine without it. Um, so yeah, um, this is, I still, I suppose I still have an issue with when it's, when people have longer build names, some people might put, you know, if they give it a name, like the Ubuntu releases, they give it names and, um, with Android, they call it like ice cream sandwich or, or what have you. So rather than a version number. So with, um, with that, it could be quite big. So what are people's thoughts? I could truncate the writing. So use, um, I can't think of what it's called now, um, in CSS. And so you just don't see the rest of it. I could, um, could wrap it ellipso or something like that. I can't remember what it's called, but there is something you can do. Um, yeah, at least now it's not exploding off the page. I think that was, that was worse, but yeah, I'll have to have a think we can maybe, um, hide I don't like how the, yeah, this is two lines and now you can see it's not aligned up kind of correctly. It kind of looks a bit, hmm. Uh, yeah, this will be higher as well. Okay, that's awesome. Um, help to fix something today. Joel, I really appreciate it. I really, really do. Like I said, please um, DM me your, your address if you're happy to post you, or your work address or whatever and having me to post you some stickers. Uh, I really appreciate that. That was, uh, that was awesome. Uh, that was cool. Um, and I will, uh, that is definitely an improvement and I want to take it one step further. Are you happy for me to, to commit that or would you prefer to commit it and raise a PR yourself and get those open source stats? I, I don't mind, I'm, I'm flexible, so let me know. Um, you, you found it, you fixed it, so I want you to kind of get the cred. There is something I can do on the command line actually as well. I can, um, if we don't want to go through the hassles of creating the PR, I'm happy to do it. And I can dual author the commit with you. Um, which I've done once before. I have to remind myself in the GitHub docs. But I can dual author really, so I think you do get some credit. I don't know if you get the green square on your GitHub though, is the only thing. Um, but let me know if, you, uh, if you're happy to raise a PR or if you, um, if you, if you don't want to, that's fine. Uh, I will do it, but I still want to kind of give you credit. Uh, I still love to send you those stickers. Uh, okay, I will leave that uncommitted for the moment uh, and while you have a think and you let me know. If I go back to the, the code and uh, I'll leave the uh, Angular running um, in the background and we'll go back to the test and I'll, I'll uh, close that for the moment. Okay, so we had just um, added the endpoint and now we need to let's go back up to the API directory. And under projects, now in the API, we want to create uh, a create.js. I do love TypeScript, but I didn't use TypeScript in serverless because the support and the documentation wasn't great at the time. And I didn't want to just, to, I didn't want to end up fighting um, with type files or creating my own and, and having all the transpiling and all that sort of stuff. So I just kept that in JavaScript. Okay, so we can just steal some code from the other create. Here's something I created earlier, like Blue Peter style. It's kind of wrong, but let's just copy and paste it. Don't tell anyone. Um, okay, and ignore the lint error at the top. I will, um, I need to sort out my ID. Uh, Staz, Stanzol, have I, have I pronounced that right? Stanzol, thanks for joining. Good to have you here. We're just working on my open source project at the moment, Dashboard Hub. I'm, uh, I'm not wearing the hat of Dashboard Hub, Alienware, but I have got my Dashboard Hub hoodie on. And uh, I, again, every time a new person comes, I do want to show off my screens. So uh, um, what do you think of my, my setup? 
Da -da. I should have some music for that actually. Yeah, I could have some music. Hang on. Da -da. Um, it's just the screensaver at the top. Um, I was watching people on Twitch earlier. Right, okay, left enough distractions. Let me turn that camera off and come back to this. Right. Uh, okay, we're doing the create. So we will still need to have uh, the UUID library, but with the model, we will want projects, uh, project singular, and then we'll want to do a create. It will come via the uh, authorized part still. So um, we'll still get that. We'll still get the principal ID of the GitHub uh, username. Uh, so we want to get the body and the parameters. We want to create an ID. We don't have a type. We do have an owner. We have a title. We have a description. And you know, let's just leave everything else off. Uh, we do have private. Again, let's just leave all of this off, and we'll come back to it. We'll add more. So at the moment, the ID and owner are automatically created by the code. Title and description get get passed in. And then we don't want uh, an environment model, we want a project model. So let's change that. Let's change this. Just for speed, how we're we doing on time. Oh, it's quarter to seven, almost dinner time. Let's see if we can get the, the at least the happy path for the post creating. Actually, we wrote some sad paths, some you know, boundary condition tests as well. Let's see if we can get those uh, done. So even if I actually even if I were to comment this out and then just put a console log, um, some of our tests should pass because now there's an endpoint. Uh, JS is funny. Uh, you're, the, you're the first person who can read my uh, Nick that fast. Oh, okay. Cool. I'll, 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 that's a really good compliment. I get my own name wrong sometimes and uh, I really struggle with people's usernames. People have got some difficult usernames. I've kept mine dead simple. Well, simple is in it's my name, but it's not simple because it's not an easy name. Um, but where's everybody from? I haven't asked. So Jules, Stan, uh, Stanzol, uh, where, where are you all from? I think there's a few other people, um, some other new people as well. Okay, so uh, let's do this. So we're creating the project. Um, if there's an error, return the 400. Couldn't save, otherwise return uh, the project model. Okay, let's just run the test and see how we're going. One thing I, I won't forget to do today is I need to restart the API because um, I added um, uh, the serverless YAML config and I just need to restart it. But for code changes, you don't need to restart it. So I'm just running that up, give that a second. Uh, Australia, uh, Austria, Australia, I can't read, Poland. Austria, Sweden, nice. Macedonia, cool. We've got some time zones. We had Jeremy earlier on from South Africa. Um, we also had uh, this modern day from uh, the East Coast in the States. Um, uh, can you add this FX layout align center center? Okay, let me have a look. Uh, the API is up and running. Let me just run the tests. So before we had three failing and one passing, but the failings were 404 um, because the endpoint didn't exist. So let me run that. Um, that was really silly. You saw my um, keys again. Uh, I pressed up, which was terrible. I should have done uh, test, that's even worse. Um, let me think, uh, I should just type it really. Test tags equals at uh, what was the test tag? It was project create and then make test as the command. And that way I won't go through my history and show my, my, uh, my keys. It's all right, we'll, uh, no one saw. It's all right. Um, they're just dev keys anyway. I cycle them quite frequently. I loan them out to people and then I, uh, that all passed, really? or four of those tests passed. That has never happened before. Usually you kind of get four failing, then three failing, then two, then one. We went from three failing to, to one. That's too good to be true. But it's, it's testing it, right? So we can prove this, let's just prove this. So we wrote down here in the successful one, so this got a 400, so that's good, didn't have a title. Description is optional, so that should be okay. Um, but down here, we we create one with create project A, and we check that it's create project A. 
let's just put project B down here, right? So this should fail. And if it doesn't, I'm gonna be really embarrassed, but I'm pretty sure it will. Let's have a look. So we have, we're creating it with create project A as a title. And then in the, in the assertion, I'm asserting for project, create project B, so this should fail. Uh, Manir.com, Mo, good to have you here. I love your studio, no idea what is happening though, I'm late to the party. No, no worries, uh, never too late. Well, you always like to make an entrance anyway, but good to have you here. Did, why the tests are running, did you see my setup? Um, and I'm sure, you know, cause you're in, uh, not in Oman, you're in Abu Dhabi, right? I'm sure you have all the toys and bells and whistles. Bells and whistles, yeah. But yeah, welcome to my command center, back cave. Uh, I thought I don't know what the, the word is, or money sink as, as the wife calls it. Um, uh, okay, so back to back to work. Right, so look, it failed, right? Everyone can see that. Uh, create, ex I in my test, I changed it to project, it expected project B, but it got project A, because we were creating project A. So that is awesome. So the tests did pass and did pass successfully. So an hour and 20 minutes later, managed to get the create endpoint working. So now with get and create update, which I'll do via a patch rather than the put because I can do a field at a time. And you send that as a, as a, as a collection um, and it does each of those individually. And a delete, yeah, easy. We'll get those finished tomorrow. Although the wife isn't home yet, we can maybe do a little bit more work. Um, uh, Abu Dhabi, yeah, I thought so. It must be quite nice and warm over there. We, I think we hit like double figures today in the UK with weather. I think we're really happy. Uh, it was, um, yeah, I think we hit like 14 degrees or something. Like, wow, the sun's out, it's 14 degrees, shorts on and everything. You probably got like 35 already. Um, uh, it's such, an, uh, such a nice software, amazing studio. Thank you, not software, stuff. Oh, <laughs> the software that we're writing is good too, you know, it's, it's good, right? We've got automated tests, we've got CI, so every time we make a change, which I've shown, um, if you look in my previous videos, I've shown that before, but uh, every time we commit and push a change, it would automatically deploy it out to testing. And then if we merge into, um, my master branch, it automatically deploys it to production. And we'll demo that later this week as well. Um, but that's, uh, yeah, it's really awesome to have everyone's support. Do ask any questions if you do do have any uh, questions for myself or other people that are listening. I'm sure if, you have, if you're able to answer, uh, if someone does ask a question and you do have um, an answer, do, uh, do just jump in. End of the day, I wanna kind of create a safe community for Twitch coders, we're all techies. So Mo, have you started uh, coding yet in Abu Dhabi? Um, I hope uh, I hope you're doing some coding over there. I keep trying to get you in, into coding, but you're really good at your public speaking. And uh, so where's the where's your link to your your Twitch account so we can uh, I can learn from you how to do my public speaking? I've been doing this now I think three weeks, two and a half, three weeks, something like that, and I have got. Um, a lot more uh, kind of confident, I think, in, in terms of my speaking. So it's, um, I probably still mumble loads, uh, but I, I get less flustered, I guess, and um, I get eat better at looking at the chat and, well, I do have to learn to look over here, um, and, uh, you know, kind of trying to manage different things. But when I get the Elgato, which is kind of a little mini keyboard with LCD buttons, and you can kind of just press stuff, uh, and switch between things a lot easier than, uh, I think that'll make my life a lot easier and save me looking over all the time. And uh, so, nope, Munir, Mo, nope to, to what? You haven't got a Twitch account yet. Get a Twitch account and start coding. Um, coding's awesome, right? Everyone, say coding is awesome in the chat for Mo. We need to convince him. We studied at university together and we both did programming. I'm sure I did all his homework though. Uh, and that's, this is going back like 20 years. This is how old we are. Um, but, uh, do, uh, do tell him that he needs to get back into coding. Yeah, coding hasn't disappeared in the last 20 years. It's only got even stronger. Add the code. Oh, add my code. Oh yes, I got distracted. Yes. No, you're right, Jewel. I mean, you're hired. Seriously, this is brilliant. I get distracted too easily. Right, let me scroll up. Um, you are right. So uh, I closed it, but I have it in my history. Uh, let's check it works. It was this one, I think. Let me um, minimize the, the side. Okay, and the code was FX layout align center center. Okay. 
Uh, and the change I made was up here. We can see from the blue in the side. And you were saying to add it to, oh, I have got FX in the, in the, in the parent, I have got FX layout align center center. Excuse me. Um, if I add it to the child, uh, to itself. So I have got it up here. If I highlight it for you, it is there. Or do you mean on the uh, nested div below? Although I don't know if that would work, but it might do because you've got the uh, the div with the H class. Um, but there is a bit of a delay between you writing and me receiving in the chat about 20 seconds. So if you're saying yeah, your nay, uh, I haven't seen it yet. But do let me know what um, if you want. I don't think I need to reread it. Can you add that? Okay. I can add it to this one, but I don't think it's an NG class. Um, it's not a class. So I can add it to here. I don't think that's it though. But I'm really rusty with this. It's been a while since I looked at it. Okay. So I've hit, hit put it in. I've hit save. Uh, Webpack should start uh, building it. That was quick. I couldn't have built it already. Oh, it does build it quite quickly. Okay. Okay. It's build it. It would have refreshed the page. Let me bring up Chrome. Okay, the data has gone because remember I restarted the API to get the new endpoint, so I need to create another environment again. So let me create a new environment really quickly. Slide, uh, stream example, here we go, stream example. Okay, let me grab this curl command. And I need to uh, go to the terminal. And if I run that command, I will just create a really long, um, long release name. Okay, so I've done that. And now if I go back to the list. Okay, so we've got that. Uh, C, C Na, uh, Naismith, I don't know if I pronounced it correctly. Uh, thanks for joining. Just tuning in, not as familiar with the markup, but looks like a version of Angular. Good guess, yeah. So we are focusing on the API side today, doing um, Node and serverless, using Cucumber to run the automated tests. But, uh, um, Dual has spotted a bug in uh, the UI, as you can see um, up here. It's uh, when the name is long, it kind of uh, it had line height before, which kind of cut the top of the the writing. So uh, Dual has fixed that now, or told me what to, to fix on that. So I moved the line height, and that came up with another suggestion to add FX layout align center center, which I already had up here but uh, down here didn't make a difference. I didn't think it would, but I, I just put it in just to check. It's always worth having a look. Uh, st uh, stands all. I don't uh, know why, but I think you look like Quasi. Who's Quasi? And who's ringing me? It's the wife. I'm in trouble. Um, Quasi. I don't know who Quasi is. I hope it's someone like really cool and funky. Although I can't a bit nerdy, but that's cool, right? Nerd is the modern day cool, I think. Uh, uh, I see, uh, I'm not familiar with Angular. Um, Quasi is a streamer. He's programming in C Sharp. Don't compare me to a C Sharp person. That's like Microsoft stuff. No. Okay, everyone knows I'm not a big fan of Microsoft. Although one of my good friends is uh, works at Microsoft, I don't speak to him so often. I you know, keep him at arm's length. Um, so uh, okay, but I will check him out. It's quasi his username. I will um, I will I will have a look and uh, um, see. I probably can learn a lot from him. To be honest, I'm new to the streaming, so I can learn a lot from him. Uh, is his setup as cool as mine? And I'm getting distracted again. So Jewel, I'm really sorry, but uh, is his uh, is his setup as cool as mine? Do have a look. Does he have all these screens? He probably has less screen, but does more work than me. I do just get distracted a lot. But chatting to you all is actually really good. It's uh, our way of uh, all pair programming and kind of going to a meetup without going to a meetup, I think. Uh, I think that's important. I live just outside London, so going to, to a meetup in London for a couple of hours where I've got maybe an hour and a half journey to get in. I don't go to them so often. I'd rather go to a whole day event at the weekend or two day event. So having this allows me to kind of have a meetup uh, every night at about 5.30 just after work. So it's kind of good. She gets, um, you know, 
Actually, I've got I've got water over here, but I'm too busy chatting to even drink that. Um, but uh, yes, let me put my screen back. Let's, let's, uh, thanks for saying I have a cool cool setup. I am very proud of it. I keep adding things all the time. You probably can't see the uh, the screen so well because I've got two big lights. As you can see, I don't know if you can see the reflection on my hand. Uh, no, well, this hand. Uh, where is it? You can kind of see the the light is quite bright. Um, but you know, I want my caps to stand out. Uh, right, okay, back to this code. So let me, um, unfortunately, Jewel, that didn't work. We will come back to it. Let me turn off Chrome and go back to the code. Uh, we'll come back, we'll come back to that. Um, we've already made one improvement to it, so that's quite good. Um, and then if I, we ran the test, so this was me breaking it um, with uh, just changing it from um, an A to a B to make sure it would fail. So now it will pass and we have the create endpoint. So let's have a look. Should we do, we, have we got time to do a delete? We're getting a bit of trouble. Should we do a delete or shall we do um, an update? What's more interesting? Mm, what do people fancy? Do you fancy doing a patch or a delete uh, API endpoint? I don't know. Let me look at some examples and see. Um, delete. Oh, that's a big delete there. So ignore that one. It's a big delete because it's got to delete multiple tables. Let's actually look at a really simple one. Um, tokens, I think tokens is a simple delete. So that's quite short bit of code that deploys to serverless and scales um, really well. So delete's quite easy. Um, I don't have an update for tokens. I don't allow an update, but I do have an update for um, environments. That's actually a bit bigger. Let's do the delete. We'll leave the update for tomorrow, the patch for tomorrow. Again, I'm just gonna copy that. And um, we should actually work a test first though. Let's um, let's do that. TDD works for a reason. So let's have a look. So we need another endpoint. So let's just copy this, and we'll say project delete, and it's going to be in the file delete, and uh, it's going to be in the function delete. You could put the whole crud in one file, but I think it's a bit a bit big and a bit long. I prefer kind of you know a file to try and uh, be less than a page in size. So the endpoint is going to be projects, but we're also going to expect an ID because we're doing a delete. We do need to be authenticated to do a delete. It's not the method is not a post. The method is a delete, and everything else looks good in that. Okay. Next thing we want to do is create. See, it's so easy to create um, endpoints in an API, and it's even so easier, so much easier just to, to host it on AWS serverless. Um, just like one command and it's, and it's free for like the first million usage a month. And I've load tested my, uh, I think I did 10,000 and uh, the Fosdem conference in February in Brussels. And uh, I didn't even use 10% of that allowance. Now like 10,000 users. So it's quite, um, it's quite generous. And even if you use another million on top of that, it's like 20 cents. So it's really, really easy to use it, really cheap. Uh, are you a programmer? Uh, yes, so my day job, I am a, a full stack developer. I'm currently working for a fintech and as a financial tech company and doing full stack JavaScript. So we are using also Angular for the front end. We're using uh, Node and Express. So JavaScript still for the back end, but with Express rather than serverless. Although we have put some um, kind of uh, jobs or workhorses uh, code into serverless because then that scales quite quite well and can listen to events on S3 and all the rest. Um, that's what we're doing at the moment. But before that, I was saying earlier that I did Java for a couple of years, uh, well, more than a couple of years, but kind of the, the bit before that was a couple of years in Java and about 10 years in PHP. Always been quite full stack and always been doing JavaScript from the beginning, like jQuery and so on, but it's not the same as doing kind of Angular 5 with TypeScript and, and Node and so on at, at the back end. Let's have a look, let's cheat again. Let me grab this delete. No, I'm just, oh, not that delete, that, uh, that's the really big delete. We just need a really small delete. Let me copy that. I'm not promoting copy and pasting code. That's how mistakes happen. It really, really is. Okay, so uh, we are gonna bring in the model projects, project singular and what have we got? So it's a delete function, which we call. So this name here needs to needs to match what we put in the serverless YAML. And we need an ID, so we're expecting the ID from the URL. 
and in the path we don't need the token ID. So this is this is from my copy day. This is why I kind of say it's bad. And then you've got the project model. And we're just going to write that there. So project we want to get, we want to get the, the project um, to make sure it exists. So we're going to get it with the ID. Um, if there was an error, we'll, we'll say couldn't fetch the item now. Um, and then we're going to change this to project, not in capitals. I've made a mistake, has anyone noticed? The uh, In the callback, I'm not a big fan of callbacks, but unfortunately the ORM I'm using for DynamoDB doesn't have promises. So uh, although in TypeScript I really prefer the, uh, what's it called, the, the publisher and subscribes, the observables, so awesome. Um, so we're going to check if we get a project and we're going to check that are we the owner of a project. And as we had auth on the API, uh, endpoint will have a principal ID. So we want to check that the owner in the uh, database matches the person trying to do the request. And we don't need the rest of this because we're not trying to find the token and, and all the rest. Okay. And if it's not found or you don't own it, you're going to get a 404. So here we want to say we don't need to filter it because we're going to get the one we want. Uh, what have we got in the chat? Uh, can't we really understand how you like PHP and hate Microsoft stuff? <laughs> Yeah, I don't like PHP anymore. I did at the time. Uh, I think it's be kind of, I was so involved in the community and the community in PHP is awesome. Um, and I kind of, uh, I mean, the community is great. I mean, a lot of the tech community is, is really good. And uh, I think even the ones that aren't so great have got a lot better and have got more diverse and more inclusive. But with PHP, I really kind of, the inconsistencies kind of bugged me with needle, haystack, haystack, needle and not having types. So I kind of got into Java and full stack JavaScript um, just before PHP 7 came out. I know PHP 7 has the optional um, of using types. Uh, I don't, didn't have generics at the time, I don't know if it does now. But people weren't using it um, and it seemed to be, took a while for people to move over to it. I know JavaScript doesn't have the types either, but the ecosystem in JavaScript is moving very fast, probably too fast in some situations. Um, but yeah, a lot more contract, as a contractor, a lot more contract roles were asking for uh, a bit of Java and, and a lot of JavaScript. So I've moved into that. And uh, yeah, um, it's still not a huge JavaScript fan, but it is, is growing on me. Definitely it is growing on me. Uh, programming in MySQL and hate Microsoft. But MySQL is not Microsoft. Um, if you said MS SQL, then yeah, I understand. I never used MS SQL and I refuse to use it. MySQL is awesome. MySQL is good. Uh, I'm using Postgres for the last two years. Uh, I've kind of got some pros over MySQL, but yeah, I do like MySQL. Uh, maybe because I know it for the longest period. That's probably why. JS is life. <laughs> Uh, C. No Smith, thank you very much. J JF, the JS, the ecosystem is really good. It's got a low barrier to entry, so lots of people get involved. But unfortunately, also, a lot of people maybe do the same thing for many, many years. And they say, hey, I've seen your dev, I've got six years experience. And they've done one year and repeated it over and over. And that happens in all languages. I've seen that in Java and PHP and all of them. So uh, I think... Uh, but as JavaScript, JavaScript has such a low barrier to entry, I think that maybe has a bit more of that. Um, but uh, like one of my, when I interview people, one of the questions I always ask is, if you looked at your code three months ago, would you say it was good or was it bad? Um, because if someone says it's good, then they haven't learned anything. I look at my code from like you know two weeks ago, I think it's terrible. So even, so I hate to think I'm learning and always learning and improving. I'm always pairing with people and working with people and I do learn so much. So I think that's important. I did interview someone once, who did a great interview. I mean, they, they knew the technical stuff, they knew everything. As we were walking out, I hadn't asked that question. And I told this story last week, so apologies if um, people have heard this before. Uh, and I hadn't asked that question and I asked and uh, he said, oh, I wrote code, I think he said two years ago and I look at it now, I think it's so awesome. I was thinking, really, you haven't le learned anything in two years. So I didn't hire him solely for that reason. It did kind of scare me a bit. 
but open source really helps. So when I when I hiring people, when I'm um, doing interviews, or even before interviews, when I get the CV, I do try and look at people's GitHub accounts and see what they've worked on. Even if the code isn't perfect, even if it's just a silly project on the side or experimenting, it's just nice to see how people work, how they think, and how they collaborate with people, especially when they comment on people's work or people comment on their work and so on. That's really really important, I think. JS and JS frameworks, uh, that's all what we need. Yeah, see, I think, uh, yeah, uh, JS went through, uh, I think, quite a bad phase. I think it's got a bit better. Maybe I'm just, um, um, what's the word, not immune to it, just accustomed to it a bit. But yeah, they did, there's ever, this new framework coming out like every day, new tools every day. Um, so there are, pro I think that's a bit too fast. It's a bit too volatile, but you know, some of them are stuck around. Hopefully the new, um, well, it was Angular, when Angular 1 came out, it was the fad, right? It was just the biggest, not the fad, that's probably the wrong word. It was a buzzword and everyone just loved it. And then React came out and took it a step further and that's the biggest thing. Um, when I go to hackathons and events, I say to me, what are you working on? I don't care, as long as I'm using React. And it's just like, okay, you know, React's fine. I don't, not a big fan of it. Um, I prefer Angular, Angular because it's got the whole kind of framework and the whole tool set there. But uh, yeah, I, I think React's kind of, you know, my personal opinion, I'm probably wrong. You're probably all gonna kind of shout at the screen now and going, that's wrong, I don't agree. And do say by all means. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of React because you need to include stuff if you want, you know, a state or persistence, you need to kind of include things and so on. Whereas Angular just has it all. Uh, I love that. Um, and uh, yeah, like I said, being TypeScript. So I think React's a bit of a buzzword at the moment anyway. But uh, that's probably because I like Angular. Um, but still, for programming servers, I would choose uh, SQL for for databases. But which SQL though? For um, um, for yeah, for what type of SQL? Uh, MySQL, Postgres, MS SQL. Uh, there's quite a few others actually as well. I clone the repo locally. I will tinker a bit, and if I find a great solution, I create a pull request. What branch should I choose to pull? Um, Jewel, thank you very, very much. Uh, uh, do it in uh, off a default branch, which is branch of 0 0.9. Uh, I think it's v0.9. Let me um, let me bring it up and see now. Uh, here we go. And if I switch, uh, yes, um, v0.9 hyphen alpha. That's the uh, default branch. Uh, the only thing uh, you, yeah, you won't need to log in, so you should be okay. I think you won't have the auth zero keys to to log in, um, but you should be able to run it to get the public page up, and that's the only page you want to check anyway. So it should be okay. Any problems? Let me know. Like I said, join me on um, maybe it's before you joined, but I said before, if people want to join Discord, the links below, and uh, we can chat between uh, between streams. And I can show off my lovely green. I missed a couple of days out look, I missed this day, when was this? Um, no contributions on the 5th of April. I think that's in a branch though, or the 15th of April. So hopefully that's in a branch and um, I can uh, catch up. Right, we need to do the, um, we need to do the, uh, the delete, we're almost done. And then we'll go get dinner. Well, depending on the time zone. Okay, let's have a look. So uh, we were saying, um, uh, did we write, we wrote the test anyway, let me check. No, we didn't. I started writing code before I wrote the test. No one told me off. Right, let's write the test first. Got carried away. Delete dot feature. Okay, in delete feature, let's, um, let me just copy the tags at the top and, and the scenario. Um, so I'm copy that, that's kind of cheating. So it's projects and it's the, the other tag I want to add is project delete. Um, and we're going to say delete a project. Again, this part at the top is just information. So it's probably written really badly and uh, I can improve it, but it doesn't actually action or run the test. In order to delete a project as a logged in user, I want to delete project data. It doesn't really make any sense actually. I, mean, I, want, to, I want to send the delete request and I need to rework I need to work on these if someone wants to help send me a PR more than welcome to uh, to accept those and if you need help you know raising a PR let me know I want to send the delete request ah, I'm just gonna leave it like that. 
run in the seed data. Okay. And I want to cheat again just for the, the sake of time. If I go to tokens and go to the delete here. Um, oh yeah, there isn't much to it actually. Yeah, that's fine. So we can do a scenario. And if we say, I, I cannot, um, uh, okay, let me catch up on the chat actually. Um, Databases I meant, my sequel I meant again. <laughs> FCK, my English. Hey, my English is terrible. Okay, I have got a British accent, but still my English is ter terrible. I'm more of a maths person, as my wife keeps telling me. Uh, okay, uh, .com, Angular Express chat. Can you check my recent project and tell me your opinion? Yeah, absolutely, Jewel. Absolutely. I, I pre I'm happy to, to do that. And um, you've, uh, what do you call it? Let me do it in Safari. You've helped me out. I'm more than happy to help you out. Uh, let's have a look. If I open that and I just uh, kind of show my Safari, let's all have a look at your project. So let's have a look. Oh, I didn't mean to click that. My bad. So, TypeScript, nice. Okay. So what do you want me to look at? More from a technical point of view or from an open source point of view? I do like, um, you know, if people release their projects as open source, I do want to kind of encourage people to get involved in that, in the open source community generally, and also involved in their projects. So I'm happy to kind of give you some feedback um, in terms of link to app, that's on Heroku. So something like this, I, would, um, I wouldn't put that kind of massive at the top in the, in the title. And again, this is another heading. You can see the underline um, below. Lightweight WebSocket-based chat created by using Express JS as a backend uh, service and Angular as a front end. We were the other weekend. I was pairing with Andrew. His username on Twitch is Venzera, and we were both on the same stream on my stream, and we were um, doing a game, making a game, and uh, we want to add WebSocket so we can have multi, make it multiplayer. Um, which would be uh, be awesome. So we'll get your expertise on that. So we'll do that one uh, one weekend. Sending message, uh, sending messages list. So okay, what about quick start? So I think can I can I raise you an issue? Are you, are you happy for me to do that? What um, I guess my suggestions would be. Uh, so open source suggestions would be something like uh, screenshot. I can raise them as separate issues, so we can always split this out and break it up if you want. To having them as separate issues uh, will, will create more activity in the repo. So screenshot uh, of app in the readme. I think we should have also a quick start in the readme. What else have we got? Let me open another tab. So Angular and Express WebSocket based chat. So I think that's uh, you got a description, you've got a link to the app. I think that's good. Um, what else jumps out? I think, yeah, you're reading me definitely need some uh, TLC. Think about when you go to other projects. Um, you've got a license, which is good. Uh, you haven't got a code of conduct. I think people are, um, I think that's important. I think more and more people are becoming uh, code of Conduct and this can be auto generated as well. There is um, what is the code of conduct? Code of conduct, uh, conduct open source. There's an open source one you can use, you don't even have to actually. It's called, I think it's Covenant. Covenant, oh, contributor Covenant. Yeah, so I'll put a link to this. This will automatically generate you one as well. So if I go, oh, gone one tab too far, I'll put that in for you. What else? Anyone else got any suggestions? Um, what we can add in? Uh, you uh, you can check it on Heroku how it looks. Okay, let's have a look. How do you uh, how did you learn JS? So I learned um, uh, JS just by um, I've been doing it for years, but more just jQuery and little bits and pieces, and. Uh, then just really got stuck into it over the last two years just really really getting stuck into it just you know pick a project and and just just do it and you'll learn as you need to i mean what what do you what do you do what do you know at the moment do you know another language 
or are you learn are you is JS your first um, your first language? I always find the second language or third language I thought is always easier to learn than the first one. Um, hey, we've got a few people in chat. It works. Um, hey, that's awesome. It's quite uh, lightweight and nice. So yeah, you need a screenshot of that. There we go. A screenshot of that. Um, what else do you got? MIT license, code of conduct. Mm. What else can you do? You've got a link to it. Yeah, I don't like this uh, big link in the title. Remove link to app in readme header. Readme header title, I don't call it. Um, I'll raise the issue for you. Do you want to us to look at some code? So you've got your server here. So um, we've got some console logs. I suppose I have those in mind for, for error stuff as well as probably debugging. Um, I would probably, if you are debugging, I would have your master as your um, kind of more of your stable. And I would have a, I don't know, a, a, an alpha branch or a beta branch. Um, how do you like the UI? Um, so let's go use this chat instead of Twitch chat. Would appreciate that. Yeah, we've also got Discord below, but uh, I'm happy to, to use it just for now uh, as well. It's, uh, it's good to get people using it and get some feedback on it. Uh, and then you've got... Um, oh, my wife is back. I have to go in a minute. Oh, I'll be in trouble. Let's all whisper so I don't get in trouble. I'll have to have a closer look later on at, uh, at the code, but you know, it looks good. Um, Import jQuery. My only question would be: If you're using Angular, why would you would you bring in jQuery? Um, but that looks good. I think we need to. Uh, I need to have a look at this and kind of borrow some of the code. I think. Now it looks good. Right. Where do we get to on that test? Do we have time to finish it off before uh, we get into too much trouble? Let's see. So the delete uh, cannot delete. Um, cannot delete if not logged in. So we'll say no given, because I'm just not logging in, so not given I'm logged in. And we'll have uh, when I is it post, it will be a delete. Um, remind me what it is. I don't remember having an example here. I make a delete request, that's what it is. So when I make a delete request, why is that not coming up? Make. I make a delete request. There we go. Delete request to, it will be projects. And we need an ID, so we'll go to the dummy data and we'll just grab one of these IDs. So let's delete the first one. Okay. So we, if you notice, the test user owns the first and second one, but not the third one. But we're not logged in anyway, so it won't make a difference uh, for the moment. Oops. Um, then, oh, I can't spell then, status code should be, uh, I'm guessing a 403, so we're not logged in, 403, okay, and then we'll do another one, which is, um, cannot uh, delete if not the owner. So make a delete request to this one. So we actually say given we're logged in. So given I oops, am logged in. So actually do a login and get a JWT. Um, are you code reviewing? Um, yeah, we were just having a look at uh, Jules' code. Um, Jewel uh, spotted a bug in mine and uh, came up with uh, an improvement. We still got one another improvement to do. So yeah, we were just looking at uh, uh, his project. I raised an issue um, with, with some suggestions. Uh, in terms of the open source side, I haven't looked into the detail um, of the actual, uh, of all the code. I think I'll have to do that later on. But I think it's also good, maybe we'll do a code review once all together, so uh, we can kind of see what people spot and what people, different people look out for. I think it'd be really good. Um, I mean, we could code review mine, but that's probably a bit biased for code review, probably someone else's. But by all means, if you want to do have a look, uh, do, do uh, comment on mine, I would appreciate it. So cannot delete if not the owner. That's really bad in English, but we can improve that later. So given I'm logged in, 
Um, let's pick the other ID. I think it was number three. Um, it was one and three. Uh, we will do. And we should get, uh, I think, a 404 we were doing in the test. Let's have a look. Yes, yeah, so if, if there isn't a project found or well, you're not the owner, um, it was a 404. So let's change it to a 404. The reason why this one's a 403 is because the authorization uh, function runs before any of our code. Um, so it will just return a 403 if you're not logged in. Because we protect that endpoint. And we can actually do another one. I was just thinking about it. Um, is I've just forgotten what it was. Oh yes, a non-existent ID. So we should change all of these to nine. How many are there? I think probably like 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Let's do nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So cannot delete if non-existent. If if does not exist, actually does not exist. And we would expect a 404 as well. So I am logged in, but it doesn't exist. So let's put that. Uh, so that one. If I'm not the owner, I expect a 404. But if we do own it now, we we expect it to delete. So can delete project. And number one is ours, and we expect a 200 on that one. Um, 200 back. So let's uh, we'll run that test. Let's see if that uh, works. I haven't quite finished this off yet. Um, let me see if we do an update on that. Um, probably just need a delete. I have to remind myself what the delete does. Let me catch up on that on the chat. Uh, what am I doing now? BDDS. Yes, um, I'm doing the earlier one today, uh, about an hour ago or half an hour ago. We did uh, the endpoint for create. So um, this is the, the create. And uh, we did the test for creating a project. I should say project. So we, we did this, we got this working. And before I call it a day, I want to do the delete so I can delete a project. And tomorrow we'll do the do the patch and do the update. Um, so I was just doing this, but I started writing the test first. Bef sorry, writing the code first before the test. So that was really, really bad. But I'm not testing it in, um, uh, in a browser or in post or anything like that. We are testing it solely from the, the automated test. So I think if I just find another delete in my code and remind myself, or oh, I have to check the docs, is if I go to, this delete's massive because it deletes from multiple tables and all the rest, and there's a batch delete. But if I just look at deletes, the one that deletes the, the environment, it is just, um, there's a get, and where is the delete of the environment? Let me see, environment, it is just a delete, nothing fancy about it at all. Okay, so uh, we do a delete with the ID. I don't need any of these um, back. Well, actually, having said that, I don't even think it had the ID because we've already done a get. There's a delete on the environment. So if we just get even easier, so we get the project and we can just say project delete. No ID, nothing like that at all. Function and in the callback, we will pass uh, an empty object like that okay let's see this is probably gonna break I need to restart actually the API server because um, we changed the uh, the serverless config we added the, um, the delete endpoint um, and that requires the ID so to, when we change this config we have to restart the API but the the rest of the time when we change code we, we don't Callback hell, yeah, I do hate callbacks, but unfortunately the ORM that I'm using um, for DynamoDB doesn't have promises. But I'm changing away from DynamoDB, as I mentioned on Saturday, um, and I'm gonna do that fairly soon uh, when I move to away from DynamoDB and go to um, something like Aur uh, Aurora Serverless, probably like MySQL. Uh, does can we kind of, let me kind of start again. Right, um, does Cucumber generate tests based on the feature description? Uh, asked by uh, Ugo, hopefully I pronounced that right. Um, you can see I'm getting quite tired and hungry. It's uh, 7.30 in the UK, it's my dinner time. Uh, so in the Cucumber, it doesn't generate the test. Uh, so what we do is um, you write the step definition. So behind this, you would actually have a step definition. So if I click it, um, you have a regex here 
and then um, it actually then you know this is just my code send request method and, and, and path. Uh, so I'm like checking the status code. Um, oh, I've got console log on there. I don't need that. Um, but it's got a regex here. It matches it. it matches the the D for the number and then matches um, the status code that I passed in against the status code in the response. And then you can just keep reusing this as much as you want. So uh, Ugo, hopefully that answers your question. It doesn't generate anything for you, but it's a lot of reuse that you can uh, use. But uh, yeah, my friendly uh, Kraken, callback hell. Yeah, that's one thing I don't like about DynamoDB. It's got, and there's only one ORM really that I found that was, you know, kind of, had a bit of regular updates and so on but even now I think it's died, died down um, so that's kind of painful I did originally start off using the raw DynamoDB kind of SDK but that was that was painful because it had a kind of a an SQL-esque but no SQL it was a real mix I don't know why AWS thought of that um, right let's run this and see so we're not running the create we're running the, the project delete um, test. I'm using a tag at the top up here and then it run that test and let's see how many failures we get. You might be able to convert callbacks to promises with node um, util promise file. Okay that's interesting. That's good to know. Thank you. Um, yeah that's true but I still think I'm going to move away from it. They all pass. No way. Oh it's hidden behind the uh, it's hidden behind the, the chat. You can't see it. Let me move it up a little bit. There you go. It all passed. I don't believe that. Let's, let's make some changes. That's just too easy. Let me change some numbers. So on the code here, if I... Well, actually, I don't need to change anything, right? Because here I'm testing, if I'm not the owner, do I get a 404? Here I'm testing, I am the owner of this ID and I get a 200. Uh... Okay, um, let me change this one to a three. So I'm going to try and delete one that isn't belonged to me. We've done non-existent. We've done all of them. These are all correct. By me changing that doesn't change anything. But let's just make sure we get a red. You know, let's just make sure something breaks. Um, to prove to you all that I haven't fudged it and there is actual tests, re uh, request and response and tests uh, coming along. If your test passed first time, you did something wrong. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's why. There you go. Look, you see the red? Okay, I'm going to move it up a little bit. Um, so I made the change and it's saying, uh -uh, you wanted a 200, but I got a 404. So it does work. Okay, first time for everything. That's pretty cool. Okay, um, I think it's, uh, um, uh, what would you call it? Um, good time to call it a day. Although Venza might be coming online. Um, let me message him. I'm just messaging him on Discord now and uh, see if he wants us to raid here. Just finished, finishing, in fact. Want to raid you. Uh, I just joined, okay. Hey, Venzera, thanks for joining. Um, let me, got too many windows open, too many screens. Uh, thanks for joining. Um, we've done a couple of uh, endpoints today. We did the create and the delete. Tomorrow we'll do the patch and then that will be the endpoint for project done. And then we can work on the Angular and the UI side. Although we did fix an Angular bug today as spotted by um, Jewel. So Vendra, are you streaming? Shall we, do you want to start streaming and we'll, uh, we'll raid you? We've got 14 people that, you know, that would like to see some more Angular and some more Node and some more JavaScript. Uh, Andrew also, or Vendra as his name was on um, uh, Twitch, he's... Uh, He's doing uh, his e-commerce platform and um, he's using similar, similar technology. Hey, I'm getting uh, hungry, I can't even talk now. Similar technology and uh, we sort of Angular 5 at the front end and um, uh, he's using Express at the back end. It's still JavaScript, but Express. He hasn't moved to serverless yet. He's a, you know, a bit out of date. We'll convince him to move though. Serverless is wicked. Uh, tomorrow, we'd love to do a stream, but it's uh, Scouts Nights for the kids. Okay, fair enough, Fenzra. You know, thank you very much, everyone, for your time, and thank you for the pairing and all the help and the questions. Um, I think that was uh, was awesome. I'm actually going. I'm actually going to show you all my my ending screen because I've got a new ending screen. So, Fenzra, what do you think of my uh, the character in the corner? Yeah, um, I've made some improvements. I, I got some help. I'm, I'm no designer. I did get some help. Uh, but I'm actually getting a, a character. 
a more of a zombie character made for Vendra. So hopefully end of this week we can share what that looks like. Um, but tomorrow we'll have, hopefully, stickers should be arriving for Twitch coders. Stickers should be arriving on uh, Wednesday. But I got an email today that they might arrive tomorrow. Uh, I think they're coming all the way from Italy. So let's see. But I do have an ending ending uh, page that I'm quite keen to, to show and leave up for a few minutes. Um, thanks again, everyone. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, pairing with you all. And we'll do some more tomorrow at 5.30 uh, again, UK time. Have a good evening. And don't forget do some all open source coding tonight. I will be checking your accounts tomorrow. And this is me transitioning over to the ending stream.